Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today I'm going to be showing you how to formulate a natural sunscreen with a beautifully pleasant skin feel. Now there's a couple of things I want to talk about first before we get into how to make these products. This particular formula uses natural and naturally derived materials as well as zinc oxide. Now I want to be really clear that the processing that zinc oxide and titanium dioxide go through doesn't actually mean they end up being completely natural. However, consumers and organic certifiers do recognize these materials as being as natural as possible and therefore acceptable in organic and natural products. So let's be clear, the materials I'm using, they're natural, naturally derived, and of course the zinc oxide I'm using is not completely natural, nor is any zinc oxide out there, but it is considered natural and accepted as natural by certifiers and consumers around the world. The next thing I want to point out is that when you're creating a sunscreen, one of the very most important factors about the sun protection of that product comes from the way it spreads onto the skin and its stability. Now this formula is quite stable and it will spread really well over the skin without greasy residue. Now it's really important how this film gets applied to the skin and also making sure that your formula is stable over a prolonged shelf life because when the product is applied to the skin if the UV filters are spread evenly you'll get the best SPF results. If however that base formula doesn't spread well or isn't completely stable you'll get agglomeration of the UV filters into clumps and that will mean there will be exposed areas of the skin that are unprotected from the sun. Another thing I want to point out is that when you're creating sunscreen products you need to make sure you get suitable testing conducted and this needs to meet the requirements of your local country where you'll be selling the product. It's really important that you get this testing done before putting any SPF claims on your product otherwise you could get consumers using the product and finding they're not adequately protected from the sun and that can turn into expensive lawsuits. It's also a regulatory requirement that if you're going to be making an SPF claim that you have suitable evidence to support that claim and that means testing to the standard applicable to your local country. Finally, I just want to talk a little bit about water resistance. Now this particular formula, because I'm using all natural and naturally derived materials and of course the zinc oxide, I can't put a film former into this product that will enable it to have uh, the required water resistance to make a water resistant claim. I am creating a water and oil emulsion with a beautiful skin feel and because the continuous phase is lipid it will impart some water resistance but it's not sufficient to make this claim on a label. So remember if you're going to be making this type of product to then sell you need to get adequate testing conducted to make sure that any claims you're making will provide the appropriate protection for your consumer. So let's get started with the formulation. Now this particular formula I am creating to TGA, Therapeutic Good Administration Standards for Australia, which means I'm quite limited in what materials I can use. And of course I'm using only natural and naturally derived materials and the zinc oxide. If you are in another part of the world where you have a bit more flexibility with the materials you can use, or you don't necessarily need the formula to be all natural and naturally derived, you've got a huge amount of choice, much more choice than I have today. So today's formula is quite basic, but it does comply with TGA requirements for Australia, and all ingredients, as I've mentioned, are natural and naturally derived, and the zinc oxide. Now I'm going to be using a dispersion and I want to show you just how well dispersions work compared to using straight powders alone. Here I have a dispersion using microfine zinc oxide and coco caprylate. Now coco caprylate is a very light feeling emollient and that's why I've chosen this dispersion to use. 
Here, by comparison, is some zinc oxide, microfine zinc oxide. It's very chalky to apply, and even if I was to create my own dispersion with cocoa coprolate, it simply won't be as evenly dispersed as this one here, which comes from the supplier, already milled and thoroughly wetted out. Now the end result also has a big impact on the SPF, the skin feel and the application of the product. You're not quite believing me? Just watch this. First, let me show you the dispersion on the skin. So this is using the straight material and it's 65% microfine zinc oxide in 35% cocoa caprilate. You'll see there's a little bit of ghosting. Now compare this to powder. This is a microfine zinc oxide, but you can see it's got significant opacity still. Now let's have a look how it is if I was to disperse it here in my lab compared to purchasing the pre-dispersed product. Here I have 10% of the 65% zinc oxide dispersion. This is the one purchased from the supplier as the dispersion already made. Here I have 6.5% of zinc oxide. Now this is microfine zinc oxide. It's a very pure grade. And to this I'm going to add 3.5% of the cocoa caprylate. And this would effectively make the same percentage dispersion as that which I've purchased from a supplier. But just take a look at the difference. Now chemically speaking, these are the exact same proportions of chemicals. These are the exact same proportions of zinc oxide and cocoa caprylate, except this is the dispersion from the supplier that's been milled and finely ground and dispersed. So it's a beautiful, even, homogeneous, liquid-like dispersion. Here I've used exactly the same proportions of zinc oxide and cocoa caprylate and you can see it's very pasty and if I apply some of this to my skin it's very ghosty compared to the supplier's product which spreads so much easier and a much less ghosty appearance. Now this is straight substance, so you can see already the dramatic difference that using a dispersion from a supplier makes to creating my own dispersion in the lab. Now, just in case you need further convincing, here is the finished product. Now, chemically, these are the exact same formulas. This one here uses the dispersed material that I've got from the supplier and you can see rubs in very well only a small bit of ghosting there hardly noticeable at all this is the exact same formula exact same amount of zinc oxide exact same amount of cocoa caprylate but in the non-dispersed form and you can see a lot more ghosting. This would not be acceptable to a consumer. And you'll also find the SPF ratings of these two products differs because this is making a much more even and uh, homogeneously dispersed film over my skin for better UV protection. This one here, the particles would agglomerate in clumps and leave some areas not so protected and that reduces the overall protection and SPF rating. So the clear winner is to use a dispersed substance that comes as a predispersion when you're using a natural zinc oxide or titanium dioxide so that you can get a much better end result. So this is the product we'll be creating today. 
So now, as I mentioned, we're going to be making a water and oil emulsion and I'm using all natural, naturally derived materials in a zinc oxide dispersion. I've already measured out here my zinc oxide dispersion and to this I've added my beeswax. Now my beeswax is uh, obviously a natural substance. Um, it's also helping build viscosity in my product. It also has a low HLB value, so it's also helping to stabilize my end emulsion. To this, I'm going to add a very light skin fuel lipid. Now you can alter your choice of lipids, but then you will alter the end skin fuel and spread. So I'm using Lex Fuel Natural for a beautifully light skin fuel. And again, I've picked materials that are compliant with TGA requirements in Australia. So if you're in another part of the world, you will have more flexibility over what lipids and materials you can use and still create a good skin fill. Um, I'm quite limited in what I can use to achieve all of my compliance claims, my sunscreen claims, and of course, natural, naturally derived and TGA compliant as well. So this is my lipid phase here. To this, I'm going to add some glycerol stearate. Now the glycerol stearate is also low HLB and it's going to help build viscosity to the cream as well as stabilize this water and oil emulsion. And finally, I'm going to add some Arlacel 1689. Uh, this is one of my favorite water and oil emulsifiers. It's a liquid blend. It does allow for dense packing at the interface. It does get the product a nice skin feel, which is very, very important for sunscreens. And of course, really helps support the stability of my formula so I get a good shelf life. Now here I already have measured out my water and glycerin which is my water phase. Now I'm going to heat the two phases and then emulsify. Now on the day you make this product, uh, the viscosity will be lower. It will start to thicken up as it cools and by the next day you'll have a beautiful cream. Now don't let looks deceive you. This is a very soft cream. Even though it doesn't run out of a jar, it's still very, very soft, easy to apply and rubs in extremely well. for a very acceptable sunscreen appearance with high SPF. Now you will note that I didn't adjust pH at the end and that is because it is a water in oil emulsion. So it is very hard to check and adjust pH in water and oil emulsions. But also this formula contains zinc oxide which will self-regulate its pH to around seven. So even if I was to try and adjust the pH, it would always self-adjust back to seven. So I know this formula is going to be quite neutral and compatible for the skin. And of course that oil continuous phase means it doesn't really carry charge in the first place, making it very hard to check and adjust pH, but also meaning it's very skin compatible. And there you have it. That's how we create a natural sunscreen. Remember the regulatory checks you need to conduct if you're planning to sell this type of product. And remember to get your product SPF tested to your local country compliance. If you change any of the lipids or the dispersion in this formula, you could get a very different SPF result. So plan for that as well. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation on how to create your natural sunscreen formulations. Happy formulating!